Thanks for joining me today as we create a beautiful masculine card for a very special person in my life, my youngest son, JT. This is Jen Lee, and this is Gentastic Journey. That includes card crafting. So I'm taking out my We Are Precision Press, and we're going to use a scene for this card. And that's often something I use or my go-to when I have a masculine card. So either a forest scene, or this is a scene where there is a fishing boat, and my youngest son absolutely loves to fish and loves the water. So here I am, I've not used the stamp before, so I'm using my Versamark Clear Embossing Ink, and that just sets that stamp for me, so it kind of gets it conditioned and will give me a much better image. So then I'm going to wipe that off, and then this is the ink I'm going to use. It's a Versafine Black ink. I love this for the fine lines that it will give me because this is quite a busy background piece. And uh, before I do anything, I am going to use my cornstarch bag because I am going to emboss this as well, heat emboss this. And so I'm going to give this a press, and this is actually going to take me a couple times to get a good image. I've been struggling with my precision press. I messed with it a little bit by putting a sticky mat on there, and I have been having some trouble with it. So I did get eventually get a good image, and I'm quite happy with that. And then I'm going to use some... Stampin' Up Clear Embossing Powder. This is fine embossing powder. And that's going to allow me to set this and also I'll be able to then color the image. And that's what my plan is for today. So I'm going to preheat my heat gun and that's very important because it just makes it go a little bit faster and it's a little bit less warping. I use this metal pan because it prevents the paper from warping because it kind of heats it from both sides. All right, so I'm very happy with that image. I'm going to use my woodless watercolor pencils. In this scenario, I'm just going to get some color on the paper and then we'll bring out some paint brushes and we will paint this or at least move around the color. So it's got a nice water scene. My son absolutely loves anything to do with the water. I believe that at some point in his life, he's probably going to live on a lake because he just loves anything to do with water sports and fishing and just is his happiest when he's got a fishing pole in his hand or is doing something on the water. So this was a perfect scene for him. And again, I'm just getting some different greens down here. And then later when I use my paintbrushes, I'll be able to blend that in. And so this is the lightest of the greens, and then I'll put a darker green. I'm also putting a little bit of green into the water. That way I can distinguish the water from the sky. And then here I'm doing a very, very light job on the sky, just having a little bit of blue up there. Back to the green, I'm going to put some more green colors in these trees. There's some background trees and some background ground as well. And I sped this up pretty significantly because you guys get the point. I'm just trying to get some color down. Now I use an old candy container that uh, had like those round ball chocolates and I use that. I spray water in there and then I pulled out a bunch of my different paint brushes and we're going to make this work. So I took out my sticky mat because I like this to kind of sit down and not move around when I'm trying to paint it. Starting off, I realized that I didn't do a very good job of cleaning off my paint brushes last time I used them, but it's gonna work out just fine. I'm using this one for the browns in that little boat. And I did actually make two images of this stamp. I'm going to impose another layer on top of that boat so that we can have a more 3D effect with the boat. And I'll do that later on. So here I'm just moving that color around. I don't have a lot of water on my paintbrush. It's just moving that around, making it look a little bit like a watercolor print. And all those different colors I had in there are blending nicely. And now I'm going to work on the sky. And I thought that I had used my watercolor paper here 
It's just a card front, and I thought it was a watercolor card front, but I soon realized that it is not. And because I'm putting so much water on here and rubbing it and rubbing it, rubbing it, I am going to eventually oversaturate this paper and it's not going to work out. But there's always things you can do when you have this situation. I'm going to try and fix it, but I'm actually going to make it worse here. I decided to take out my Distress Oxide and try and put some color on there. And you can see where it's starting to just shred that paper a little bit. And that's when I'm going, hmm, definitely not my watercolor paper. <laughs> Should have checked that to begin with. And I just have a box that I have call it card fronts. And I thought that this card front was one of the watercolor ones, but it's not. And we'll, we'll take care of it later. I'm just going to probably cut that part off. I do keep going and keep trying to have different things happen with the <laughs> sky part but you'll see eventually I give up and that's the beauty of this. Nobody needs to know that I spent a bunch of time on the sky when it didn't actually work out. So here I'm just going to use all these little reeds. I like this greenish yellow color for that. And it's a really pretty scene, quite serene. I am enjoying this quite a bit. And then this water, I turned it into this teal color. It's got a little bit of blue in there and then I used a teal color as well. So I think that came out really pretty. And again, I sped this up pretty significantly. These watercolor pencils are fantastic. If you aren't really great at watercolors, but you like the look. So here I try and maybe put some clouds in here because I just didn't like how streaky it looked. And I was trying to detract from the fact that I'd ruined some of the paper. But then I used a paintbrush that had some green on it. And so just was adding more problems than I was helping there. It didn't end up looking too terrible, but you can see that paper is pretty wet. And I'm using my guillotine just more to measure because this paper's pretty wet. It's not going to cut well. So I'm just using this to measure some things. You know, I don't love to measure, but I do want this to be a five by seven card base. So I'm cutting this down a little bit so it'll fit. I'm going to mat it as well on some brown paper, but that's what I have so far. And this is the brown I want to put it on. And here's where you can see I really caused a problem when I tried to tape and that top part is so wet that it just tore that paper. So I end up cutting that top part off and then I'm looking for a piece of paper that will act as the sky. And I have plenty of paper and found several that I liked. Then I'm going to just trim this down a little bit more so we can get all the white off of there. And this paper's dried quite a bit since then. Okay, and I ended up deciding on this piece of paper because I really liked how it looked golden and then went into the blue and I thought that it didn't take away so much from that boat that I want to be my focal point. So I'm going to make a couple marks on here and we'll cut down this paper a little bit and that'll just be a nice matting layer and it'll bring out that boat again which I want to be my focal image. So I'm going to put a tape runner all over this matting layer. And then I have a white card base. Later I will put something on the inside of it, but I really like how this will all come together. So even though this paper, I really liked it, I liked that pink and I know it's a guy card, but I decided to pop this up onto some foam tape. But you'll see I'm gonna let a little of that pink show through and it just kind of acts as a mat. And here I am with my heavy <laughs> foam tape. Any of those of you that have watched my channel before, I do like to be heavy on my foam tape because I do put all of my cards, most of my cards through the mail and this one is no different. So I wanted to make sure that we don't have any weird puckering or anything like that. All right, and I was struggling with this because I had popped it on there and then decided to trim it down, but I got some of it trimmed and then I'll just use my long bladed Tim Holtz scissors to cut the rest. And see how that little teeny bit of pink, I just think that did something for it. These are my happy birthday dies. I have quite a few of them because I seem to make mostly happy birthday cards. So I'm choosing which one will look best on here. I've got some big ones and I do want something that's kind of masculine. I thought it was going to be this one that's kind of a retro kind of one. And I thought it was a little bit too much. I try a few more. I go back to this one again, but then ultimately decide to keep drying. And so I pull out this one and this is, it's like perfect because it fits that space really well and it's not so scripty where it's gonna be not as masculine. So I decide to use that same brown paper. You'll see I make a mistake here. I don't tape it down and you see that I'm going to cut this poorly. 
but it's okay. I hold on to that piece and then I did it, did it again and the second one came out much better. And we'll actually end up using both of them later on so it won't be a total loss. And then I always just stick extras in the back of my die cutting those plastic bags. That way, in case I need something later on really quick, I can pull from that. So here, just trying to get all the little bits out. And this is a two-part die set, so there's the shadow to it and then this one. So I decided to use the same paper pack and make a very bright happy birthday out of this and I thought that would be nice for the inside and then I'd use the brown as the shadow piece. So just going to push all these out and I always use my, it seems like this tool is best for this because my poker tool is almost too wide and so my tweezers do the best with this. So just, it's a very delicate die, so I'm going to work very gently with this, and you'll see that this shadow, I need to pull out all the other, or pull in all the other pieces if I'm gonna use that as the shadow. Then I was like, maybe I won't use it as a shadow. Then I was like, maybe I'll have as more like of a, a true little offset, or do I want the whole thing? And I'd have to pull out all the little pieces. I didn't throw them away. So you'd have to fill all those in. And I was like, I just don't think I like it. <laughs> so then I was like, maybe I will use these two pieces, the one that I did initially that didn't come out perfect, and then the second one, and maybe I would just layer those on top and just do that. I figured I would do something with just these pieces, and I'd layer them up. So here I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. It's my favorite glue when I have these little precise pieces. And yes, you can certainly cut out with some double-sided adhesive sheets. I just always, <laughs> I never know what I'm gonna do. It's always an afterthought for me, so I'm just as happy to use my glue. It doesn't bother me at all. And this glue dries matte, so you never see all the little extras that come through. So I am going to use my tape runner. It's giving me a little bit of trouble here, but I really like these tape runners. I get them at Hobby Lobby. They sell them everywhere. You can get them on Amazon too. I will link all the supplies I use in the description box below. I'm not monetized and I'm not affiliated, but sometimes it just helps when you see something and you're like, oh, I'd really like something like that. And then you don't know where it is or where you can get it. So always look in my description boxes. So I decided, I was like, should I put that on top? But it just seems so bright. So I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I kind of like that. So then here I was like, hmm, maybe I'll use that as the offset. And I love it. So that's what I came up with. You never know what you're going to do. You just keep playing around, playing around, and then eventually it comes to you. Sometimes I need to walk away and come back, and it just all seems to make sense when I do that. But in this case, it came to me. Sometimes you get something stuck in your mind, and then it's hard to see any other way. <laughs> but luckily this time I was like, I just thought that that blue and purple was just a little too bright for the scene, and I didn't want it to be overpowering the rest of the scene. And so this will be perfect. It'll just be a slight offset. The brown will be the dominant color in the sentiment, and that'll be perfect. I do have glue all over my fingers, but this glue doesn't stay. I can easily wipe it off with a rag, and it doesn't stay on my fingers for very long, so I appreciate that about it too. So we'll get this all glued up, and I do have this sped up a little bit so that it's not taking super long to get this glue on there, but it is important to get glue on just about every part of it. So we'll get that glued in place, and that's it so far. Still have quite a few things I want to do. I double check and make sure that it does open the right way. We've all had that happen where we put it on the wrong direction, but I did it the right way. So I'm looking at that, this trying to decide what else it needs. And I took out my Wink of Stella, and I'm just going to put a little shimmer on the water. Only the water. You could see I hesitated there, like, do I go crazy? And I'm like, no, no, this is a masculine card. I'm just going to put a little bit of shimmer on that lake. It just gave it a little something. The camera doesn't do it justice, but it really came out pretty. Then I'm going to pull out my birthday sentiment or my birthday sayings, pick out something that is meaningful. And I cut out a lot of this because I was reading them all because my youngest son is one of my most favorite people on the planet. He's just kind and he's one of my most favorite people to spend time with. So I wanted to, to be the perfect saying. And so I'm reading and reading and reading and can't decide. And then I finally pick a couple that I like. This is how I store my stamps. If you want to learn more about my organization, you can see my video and I'll link it in 
in the description box as well. It's my craft organization video. All right, so from the same paper set, I decided to pull this piece of paper out and I'll put that inside the card just to give it a little something and to tie it in with the card front a little bit. It's just got similar colors. And then these are the two sentiments. It says today is a great day because it's all about you, the great things you do, something along those lines. And then it says love your birthday. And then I am using my Memento black ink and I dropped it. So I got ink all over the place. <laughs> so I always make sure that I wipe that off because I never know. Even though I'm using my stamping platform, you just never know. So it says today is great because it's all about you, the great person you are and the great things you do. I just love that sentiment. He is a really great person and he does a lot of really great things. So it's perfect for him. And now my tape runner is behaving itself and it's going to allow me to put this in perfectly. I really like that. I really like how they have similar colors. I don't know if you can't see the shimmer. The camera's really not helping me with the shimmer, but the shimmer looks really cool on the lake. So I'm pulling out my punches because I think the inside needs a little something more. And then because I have the scrap piece, why not use it, right? I love to be able to use every bit of my supplies when I'm making a card and this is no exception. So I'm gonna make a couple of different colored leaves out of this scrap paper. And then I'm just gonna try and stick them in places where it's the opposite color. So this little green one will go in the blue area and the blue one will go in the green area. And then I kept one that is kind of variegated to go on the side there as well. And that just does a little something to it. The little extra touches I think are super important and that's what makes card making so awesome is we can add those little teeny touches that make all the difference. And it's still gonna give me plenty of room to write him a long, <laughs> drawn out mother sentiment for him as well. So here you can see I popped that boat on it and I almost forgot to show it. I was about to start writing the card out and there's the boat there. So you can see how that popped out. And I think that looks really great. So as an added bonus, I wanted to show you guys how I'm going to make an envelope for this card. I do have a video on how to do this. So it's a lot more detailed. It shows you what you would do on different cards or different size cards. And it, I also show that there's an, a tool above me that I use mostly to determine what the sizes are, but I have this little card that is a cheat for this as well. Since this is a five by seven card, I just cut a 10 by 10 inch square. And then I use the card just to help me figure out how much space I need. So if it's got a lot of embellishments, I might give it a little bit more room, but this card doesn't have a ton of embellishments. It just has that extra from where the boat is. I always cut out the notches for my envelopes and that's easy to see because that's where I made all the creases. It's hard to see on that blue paper so I flip it over so it's a little bit easier to see on the white side. And then again I keep that piece in there. It's a, it is a five by seven inch pretend card <laughs> and I just put that in there because it makes it super easy. I'm not a big measure as you guys know so the less measuring I can do the better and so here I'm just cutting out the other two notches making sure I just had enough space and then we'll fold it, fold it all in together those two inside flaps and then I always cut this straight across and it just looks more finished so you can see here that just looks a little bit more finished and then instead of that pointy tip for the part of the envelope I decide to corner around that with my punch. I always flip my punches over because I want to make sure that they get in the right little notch there and then I'm just using double-sided tape to close this off. Now one thing I did wrong here is you really just put the double-sided tape on either side and not in the middle. And I just was distracted and just kept going. And so I did put it in the middle. There's nothing for it to adhere to. So it could adhere to your card. So once I realized that I just put the backing back on the tape and it was good to go and nobody will ever see it. So it's fine. So you see here, I took it off, but then I'll put it back on later. Otherwise that sticky part will get onto the card. So that is the card and the envelope and then I'm stamping my handmade with love by Dentastic journey on the back of it and it's all done thanks for sticking this out with me this is a long video for a very special card please click the like button if you enjoyed this content also if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel it's a small channel and I appreciate all the subscriptions and love your likes and please share this out if you think somebody else might enjoy this I'll see you in the next card making video